I think it's going. Okay, I'm on. Cool. Good start. Uh, today, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk, uh, by the end of this lesson here, I want you to understand uh, three terms. Instance variables, uh, mutator methods, and access accessor methods. Okay, so just three terms. Instance variables is the first one. So to talk about instance variables, uh, let me create a new project here. And I'm going to go ahead and put it into period three. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to create a class. It's going to be the chicken class here. It doesn't exist because I haven't created it yet. Sorry. Select the folder. Now I'm going to create the chicken. And I'm going to create the chicken class. Now my chicken, chickens have many variables. They're attributes even. Lots of things you can uh, define a chicken. My chicken, you're going to be able to define it two ways. By its size and by its ability to fly. It can either fly or not fly. So whenever you open BlueJay, I always tell you to delete all this stuff. Well, today I'm going to ask you to not delete all this stuff. The, the stuff that defaults in there is there for a reason. So you can see what I kept in here is this little comment that says instance variables, and then I kept the constructor. We're going to talk about both of those things today. Let's talk about what an instance variable is first. An instance variable, when you need many methods to have access to the same information, the same variables, you make what's called an instance variable. The scope of an instance variable is the entire class where the variable is defined. So up at the top here, I'm going to make some variables. And this entire class is going to know those variables. So from that curly brace down to that curly brace, that variable will be known. It won't be known anywhere else. So the way that you define these instance variables are up here. I'm going to have two of them. One of them is going to be the size of the chicken. And the other one's going to be the whether or not this thing knows how to fly. And I'm going to call it a Boolean because it either knows how to fly or it doesn't. It's true or false. Okay. So those are instance variables because they're defined at the top. Now, they are only known within the class. They're not going to know, be known to the main program. These are private variables, so I need to put the word private in front of them. So I've got two private instance variables here. Now, you do that before. That's the first thing you do. Put the instance variables right at the top of the class. Now, inside what's called the constructor here, see how it says public chicken? It's called the constructor. It's kind of like a method. It's not exactly the same, but this is the place where we're going to define our parameters. Uh, constructors are similar to methods. They set the properties of an object to initial state. So think about it as a default. What do we want our size to default to? What do we want the ability to fly to default to. So right here, I just want to say something like size equals zero. That's the default. Or I want to put uh, fly equals true. So the default constructor would be this thing is size zero, fly equals true. Now, that's what you could do. But what you could also do is put a set of parameters right here for size and fly that allows the person creating an object, when they instantiate an object, allows them to define what, what the size is and what, uh, whether or not they can fly. So the way you could do that, and constructors often have parameters, but not always, but they often do, it allows data to be passed into the class so that it can be assigned to instance variables. That's what I want to do here. I want to, instead of having size and fly, I want to assign that data. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a parameter called S. I'm going to create another one, a Boolean called uh, C. I'm just going to say, OK, size equals S and fly equals C. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me, when I create or when I construct, when I instantiate my object, I'll be able to say, hey, this chicken, it's of size 50. And it can fly, so that would be true. Or this chicken's small, so it's of size 10, and it can fly, so that would be false. 
So this is different than what we were doing last time. Last time we were just creating an object and every object we created would be the same object. They would have the exact same properties. This, using the constructor, allows us to create objects which are different in some way. Let me show you how that would work then. In the runner class here, this is where the main method's gonna be. And I ask you this every time, but if you could help me write the main method. Okay, some of you have this memorized. Don't sound so excited, sheesh. So here in the runner, in the main method now, I can instantiate new chickens. So what do you want to name your chicken? Paul. So I'm going to name a chicken Paul. I'm going to say it's a new chicken. And maybe this is a small chicken. So it's size 10. And it can fly. Give me another chicken name. Bob. Chris. Bob. It's a new chicken. Maybe this one's fat. So I give it size 50. So it's too fat. It can't fly. And so now I've got two different chickens with different properties. So instead of having to create the same object over and over again, now I have the ability to create objects that at the outset, at the beginning, have different properties. And that's because we have this constructor here. Now notice this constructor is called chicken. The constructor always has the same name as the class. So this is the chicken class. This is the chicken constructor. It has the same name. Now, what I could do is I could just print out some of this information now. System.out.println. And I could say, Paul is, um, and then I could do, Oops, sorry. I got to do that over here. If I wanted to make a method here, I could do public void and I could call it print. And I could actually get this information by doing system.out.println. And I would just print out the size and whether or not they can fly. Now, I have to print it out from here because size and fly are instance variables. They don't exist in the main class. They don't exist in the main method. The main method doesn't know what size and fly are. They only exist in this class. So if I'm going to print them out, I've got to print them out from here. But I can call this method. I could say, hey, Paul.print, calling that method I just created. And I could also do, doesn't like that. I'll fix it in a second here. Uh, Ob.print as well. Uh, what doesn't it like about this? Tell me the error. Void type, not allowed here. Uh, why? Oh, because I don't, because I'm I don't need to type system dot out dot print line twice because it's printing from the actual. Uh, delete that. So I can just call it print because see in the actual method here, it's going to print out. So I don't need to say print twice. That's what was confusing Java there. All right. So very simple program. I run it. It's just going to print out some information. So Paul, size 10, it's true, it can fly. Uh, Bob, size 50, it can't fly. Nothing fancy here. Just a couple of instance variables. So there were three things you needed to know today. Instance variables, mutator methods, and accessor variables. Or sorry, accessor methods. So let's talk about mutator methods next. 
I'm just going to add a method here. And the method I want to add is called a mutator method. Now, a mutator method are methods that change the property of the object. So when I construct it, when I make the chicken, I'm going to say, hey, it's size 10, and it can fly. Well, what if I don't want it to fly? What if I want to make it so that it can't fly anymore? How do I change it? Well, you'd have to make what's called a mutator method. And in this case, I could just do public void, and I'll make a method change fly. And it's going to take a Boolean. And let's just call that Boolean F. And all that this thing is going to do is it's going to take that, that Boolean, whether it's true or false, and it's going to change fly to whatever we send into it. So if I send in true, it's going to change fly to true. If, uh, if I send in a false, it's going to change it to false. So this is called a mutator method because it's going to change whatever fly is equal to. So when we construct the object, fly equals something that I can change it using a mutator method. So let's do it. Let's say, okay, Paul dot change fly. And right now, Paul can fly, but I don't want him to fly anymore, so I'm going to do false. And so now when I print out Paul again, I constructed Paul such that it's true, but now I've mutated or changed Paul so now that he can't fly anymore. Okay, so anytime you call a method that changes the object, that's called a mutator method. One more, accessor methods. This is the last one. Uh, where'd I go? Instance variables. I can't see it. Sorry, that's been freezing up on me lately. Accessor variables, size and fly are only in this class. What if I wanted the main method to know what size and fly were? How could I get that information? Well, to give that information to other classes, we have what are called accessor methods. And accessor methods are public methods that access the private data from a class, and then they typically return that data. Okay, so what would that look like? I'm just going to add one more in here. So notice that the mutator method didn't return anything. It just changed the variable. Accessor methods are going to return a value. So let's do public void and let's do can fly. And all this thing's going to do is it's going to return whether or not this thing can fly. OK, so you can tell it's an accessor method because it's accessing private information and it's returning it. So let's just call it now. Whoops, didn't like that. Uh, not a void. So see what I screwed up here? It's trying to return a value. Now when it's void, that means it doesn't return anything. What kind, of that, what kind of variable is fly? What should it return? What data type is it? Boolean, because it's true or false. So yeah, public Boolean can fly. I'm going to compile that. And now I just want to say, hey, can Paul fly? So I'm going to do paul.canfly. I want to print out system.out.println. And Paul fly. And then I'll return that. And it's going to say true or false. Paul cannot fly. All right, so I know that's boring. That's why like three of you are asleep currently. So I think that's a new record for me. Three people asleep in 20 minutes. Must have been a good lunch. Four. New record. But this is really all that I needed to teach you today. Now we kind of get our hands dirty with it. So the three things, just as a review, the three things that I need you to know. 
And I'm sure it's going to be on the AP test, all over the AP test. Up here at the top of the class, these private variables, those are called instance variables, and they're only known to the class. This is a constructor, and when you initialize, when you create an object, you can specify specific parameters so that each object is a little bit different depending on those parameters. Now, you can have as many parameters you want. I had two here, you could have 15 if you wanted to. There's always going to be some sort of default based on what's passed in. Now, right here, when we're doing change fly, anytime you change an instance variable, it's called a mutator method. And anytime you allow other programs, and I know that you can let other programs do it because it's public, anytime you let other methods or classes access private information, that's called an accessor method. Okay, that's all that I needed to teach you today. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Bye.